Congenital diaphragmatic hernia is an often fatal birth defect affecting every one in two and a half thousand babies. CDH can affect any baby. It's not selective with its victims and can affect all races and social classes despite the best level of antenatal care. It can affect both boys and girls and can occur in multiple pregnancies but it is not thought to run in families. Some of the babies that do survive will experience various degrees of ongoing medical issues such as chest or stomach problems. A few babies can suffer from developmental delays and hearing problems. Some are very lucky and only have a scar. CDH can occur alone or with other birth defects and rarely it occurs as part of a syndrome. Every CDH baby is different. There's no way to predict the outcome 100%. Some babies with poor outcomes survive, while some babies with full lungs do not. Each baby is unique, requiring different treatments and varying amounts of medical support. There is no known cause or prevention of CDH and treatment remains medically challenging. Currently, statistics show the survival rate remains around 50%. Incredibly, for a condition that is almost as common as some other familiar, well-publicised conditions affecting babies and has a high mortality rate, not many people are aware of CDH. We need to change this by raising awareness and educating others. Too many families go home with empty arms like us and we hope with more well-designed studies, trials and research the survival rate can be improved or ideally a cause and prevention can be found for this devastating condition. I am lucky I survived. Well, what is diaphragmatic hernia? It's a question that many parents ask. What is this condition that my baby has? Well, diaphragmatic hernia is a birth defect. In other words, it's a congenital condition in which a defect or a hole exists in the diaphragm, which is a muscle that partitions the chest and abdominal cavities. And a result of this defect in the diaphragm, contents from the abdominal cavity, the stomach or the other parts of the gut or the liver, prolapse up into the chest and compress the developing lungs. Is it a rare condition? Well, actually, it's not that rare. And in fact, many people will be familiar with cystic fibrosis or will have heard or have known somebody that has cystic fibrosis. Diaphragmatic hernia is as common as cystic fibrosis. And indeed, in Britain today, every 24 or every 36 hours, at least two to three babies are born with this condition. CDH is a diagnosis on ultrasound. Um, most ladies consent to having a 20-week scan and at that scan we notice that there is a problem with the diaphragm. That's a sort of muscular structure, if you like, that separates the chest from the abdominal cavity. And how we commonly um, pick it up is that usually the stomach, which is a black space on ultrasound, would be below the diaphragm but commonly with diaphragmatic hernia, because there's a hole in the diaphragm, it's pushed up into the chest. So instead of seeing the chest cavity with the heart on the left-hand side and two lungs either side, you see abdominal content, so sometimes stomach and sometimes bowel that moves up into the chest and pushes the heart from being on the left-hand side over onto the right. The precise causes of CDH aren't really known. Um, it could be due to all sorts of what we call multifactorial problems. Sometimes um, it's related to genetic syndromes, sometimes to chromosome problems, sometimes it just happens out of the blue. I think the most important thing um, when you see any family with an abnormality is to tell them that it's nothing that mum's done. It's one of those things. We would uh, estimate that about half of the cases of congenital diaphragmatic hernia are picked up at the 20-week scan. Well, making a prognosis for a baby with a diaphragmatic hernia is indeed a, a difficult issue. We generally say that 50% of these babies have a chance of survival. In recent years, a number of specialists around the world have tried to look more carefully to find more robust markers of prognosis to give parents greater hope for the pregnancy and for the baby itself, or indeed to perhaps tailor therapies that may be explored before birth.
to try and help the baby. It's, it's essential that babies with diaphragmatic hernias uh, are born in, uh, in very large regional centers that have advanced neonatal intensive care and also have pediatric surgery on the, on the, on the same site, availability of pediatric anesthetists. So essentially, they have to be born in large centers. In relation to diaphragmatic hernia, there are, there are, there are two scenarios really. One is that the lungs are so small that it's very, very clear that, that they can't maintain their oxygen levels or that their carbon dioxide levels are very high, which can lead to a situation where acid can develop in the blood. And we share, we share that information with, with parents. And there's a second situation where we're giving all the treatment that we can, and despite all that, we're still not able to get to the baby to the level that is required so that they can go on and have, and have an operation. I think lots of discussions with the parents and, and just honest about, about what is going on. It really is a, a champagne cork opening moment when a baby with Daphne Hernie gets home with the family. But then begins a different journey for the family and that is what is the short, medium and long term outcome for their little baby. And we do know that these babies have a number of issues that one has to be aware of. They can have feeding problems. They can have problems with their heart. They can have problems with growth. They may have hearing problems and may have general developmental problems. We still have a long way to go and we're looking at trying to improve lung function. In other words, how can we make the lungs of a baby with diaphragmatic hernia better? And to really address that problem, one has to go back to the fetal period before the baby is born. And there are a number of things happening at the moment in the context of randomised controlled trials. And a randomised trial is you're trying to decide whether treatment A is better than treatment B. Certainly within Europe uh, is a trial looking at a fetal procedure to place a balloon in the baby's windpipe or trachea to see whether that can help the lungs to kickstart and grow better. So the fetal trial is something experimental that's being evaluated at the moment. Along with the fetal procedure that's being tested in a randomised trial, we're also looking at which ventilation works better, which form of ventilation may work better for these little babies. Will we ever be able to prevent diaphragmatic hernia? I don't know, that's a difficult one. But we're beginning to understand a little better the genetics involved in why this birth defect takes place. CDH UK was founded in 2003. We are a registered charity with the Charity Commission of England and Wales and Scotland. We offer support to anyone affected by CDH via our website, our publications and we also have a free phone support line that you can use. We also offer support via Facebook and we even tweet. We produce a newsletter twice a year for families to share their stories with other families and we also host a get-together. We try to do this at various locations across the UK so that all our families have access to getting together with other families and sharing their experiences. We also run what's called a home to hospital scheme to help our families financially. Sometimes families can find that they're in hospital from anything from two weeks to over a year and hopefully this scheme will help you a little bit. We like to attend conferences and seminars. This helps us to keep up to date with any new medical advancements. We also issue newly diagnosed parents with a parent support pack. The packs include little items for baby and items for parents too. We encourage and promote research into CDH into both the causes and treatments of CDH. We even have our own research fund. You can help raise funds for our charity by organising your own event or participating in one of our organised events, such as walking, taking part in a marathon or even jumping out of a plane. We also raise awareness of CDH. We do this in numerous ways, and one of the ways that we do it is by organising campaigns. We also sell awareness items through our website, such as t-shirts, wristbands, and these lovely badges. We hope that you've found this short film both informative and interesting, and that you have learned a little bit about CDH and what our families have to endure. 
If you would like to help our charity further, be it fundraising or volunteering, you can contact us via our website where you'll find all of our contact details. Thank you. Ooh. 